Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show today. Today's show and today's guest is going to be very interesting. We are, of course, about to meet uh, Jamie Sheldon pulling out of Riverside, California. He's somebody who has been consistently performing in the top tier of the lightweight category in North America for a long time now. He has been as high as rank number three in North America, in fact, and uh, is, of course, about to compete on the WAL scene uh, up against Jeff Hale. So without further ado, let's get Jamie Sheldon. The natural Jamie Sheldon on the line. <clears throat> Here we go. Hey Ryan. Jamie Sheldon, how are you, brother? Doing well, man. How you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. How is Riverside, California treating you, mate? Riverside, California is a little warm, but I like it like that. It's nice out here. Yeah. What, what, is, what is the temperature? I'm about to fly over there literally in a, in a day's time, and it's freezing cold where I'm coming from. So what's it, what's it like right there? Well, we're going to be in Arizona, so you're, you're looking at 110 probably. Um, <laughs> it's, it's it's like low 90s today, uh, early, or high, high 80s, I'm low look, 90s I'm here look, in Riverside. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, Jamie, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, for all of our guests, Jamie Sheldon, he's uh, a professional arm wrestler from North America, been in the, the top tier of the North American ranks for about for about 10 years now as, a, as a, an elite competitor, uh, particularly within the 165 pound category. But Jamie, I would, I would love to, to hear your story about where you started in the sport. How, how on earth did you find the sport of arm wrestling some 13 years ago? Oh, man. Uh, let's see. I've been competing for about 13 years. Um, yeah, I started just like everybody else, man. You know, you go to the bars, you beat your friends on the picnic table or, or <laughs> lunch tables at school. And, you know, I was going around town just, you know, arm wrestling when people would get, you know, really buzzed at the bars. And finally, I looked it up online and said, let me go find a tournament. And uh, the year before that, I remember seeing it on ESPN. So I remember seeing like Mike Solaris, Bill Sinks, Ron Baff, those guys just, you know, dominating. Yeah. So I was like, well, this is a thing. Let me go find it. So I, I drove about an hour to John Bergeson Sr., uh, one of his tournaments in uh, Los Angeles, uh, northern L.A. Yep. And um, funny story there, you know, I, you know, I was, hey, I'm going to show up and do the pros, make some money, you know, how everybody thinks. <laughs> and then <laughs> it turns out I, I met Luke Kent that day yeah. and uh, Alan Fisher, and I, and I shook Alan's hand and I said, Nah, I think I'll pull amateur. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear Alan's got an enormous mitt of a hand, but uh, it's funny because those guys, those guys obviously um, down the track became your rivals in that. So how, how did you how did you how did you go in that amateur comp in that first comp? That you know, I, I, well, the fact that I pulled amateurs was the best decision I ever made. You know, if I would have pulled pros, it would have been me against Alan, Luke Kent, uh, Harold Ryden, Simon Barachoa. I mean, this this class was stacked in the one seventy sixes. So yeah, I. Uh, I pulled amateurs and I won, and then I never looked back, man. I went to Vegas the month after that, which was one of the biggest tournaments ever that they had in Vegas. It was the Ultimate Arm Wrestling uh, 2. Yep. I mean, those classes were stacked. It, it was crazy. I mean, I, I pulled amateurs that day, too, and I, I took a loss to Corey Miller, who... Corey Miller took second that day in the amateurs, if that tells you anything. <laughs> Gee, uh, that, that long ago. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't. Then, I, I honestly didn't realize that um, arm wrestling was on ESPN all those years ago as well. I I didn't realize that it had such great coverage back then. Oh, it's had several stints. Well, not several. I take that back. It's had at least three in in my years of pulling. Right when I started, it was it was on ESPN twice, and then the Best Damn Sports Show, which mm. was a show they had out here. Travis was responsible for kind of you know getting the sport out there, being the guy yep. he is. So yep. he was really instrumental in that. And then, you know, it kind of fizzled out, and then it came back a few years later, and then fizzled out again, and then, yeah. you know, here we are. We're we're on another peak, yeah. I guess yeah. you can call it. Yeah, well, yeah. No, you've got you've got a big a big match coming up, which uh, I'd love to get to a bit later, but um, against Jeff Hale, of course, uh, one that one oh. that uh, I can't wait to talk about. But um, before we get before we get there, those those early years of of competition. Um, uh, what was the what was the foundation like for you? We, I mean, you, you sounded like you were pretty hungry right from the get go. You, you got the bug, but um, were, were, you, were you were you full on? Were you all in in your training? Were you were you straight away saying I want to be a, a world champion that sort of thing? Or what was the journey like? Uh, you know, being competitive by nature. You know, I've 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 done relatively well at every sport I've been in. Um, 
I, I, I saw this as something that, hey, you know, I've been doing this for years. I naturally have an ability to do certain moves. Mm-hmm. Why not see where I can go with this? So, and I don't half-ass anything. You can talk to my friends, my wife. I'm, if I put my mind to something, it's, it's all or nothing. So for a while there, when I had time, yeah. it was arm wrestling was my focus, you know. And I was 25 years old when I started. Yep. Um, so I was a single guy, no kids. <laughs> yeah, I can go pretty much to every tournament I, I choose. Yeah. So I linked up with Harold Ryden in San Diego, and he kind of took me under his wing. So I was driving to his house every Saturday for practices, religiously, literally, for you know at least a year and a half, two years. Yeah. And then <laughs> trying to get every tournament I can. And I, you know, I would pull the amateurs and the pros. Yep. And that's, that first year, I flew all the way to Arkansas, which is, you know, most of the way across the country for me. Mm. Um, and I went to nationals, and I ended up seeing how it was to pull against the pros. I ended up losing to Ray Hendricks, which I finally got revenge on him like two years ago. <laughs> it took that long to see him again. But he destroyed me. Yeah, well. You know, that first year. Luke Kent, Luke Kent took second to him at Nationals. I think Ray won it. And I was out within, like, three rounds. I think I won two matches and I lost two. And I was like, wow, I got my ass kicked in arm wrestling. This is the first time that's ever happened, you know, yeah. on the main. Yeah. Well, so, it, you know, I was, just, I was just hooked from there. I was yeah. like, all right, I'm going to get these guys back. That's awesome. That kind of thing. That's awesome. Yeah. The, 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 sort of, the sort of training um, that, you, that you've undertaken on, the, on that journey, I mean, you, your distinctive style, you look to me like you're – you're one of those ultra fast twitch top rollers that um, just has an, an incredibly explosive uh, hit on the outside. It, was that always the go-to move for, through, throughout your journey so far? Well, for the longest time, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say I was a posting top roller for a while, and then I was losing to hook pullers mainly. You know, I'd get turned in, and then I wasn't using my bicep, which not until in recent years I realized that I've got an amazing bicep. I can when I initiate the hook in my terms, mm. it's pretty deadly. Yeah. I just never knew how to do that because nobody out here hooks. Yep. Everybody was top rollers. So, <laughs> yeah. um, I, uh, yeah, I started off mainly, mainly trying to perfect the top roll and then realized you got to be more, more dimensional. You have to learn how to pull in the strap to be, yeah. you know, a, a good puller nowadays. You have to have an inside game. So I've kind of cultivated a high hook, low top roll type style now where, Yep. I'm still going to hit hard against your fingers, but I can hook from there. If I can sink it in, it's 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 fine. It's yep. not the greatest hook in the world, but I put my arm strength against anybody in that 165 class in the gym. Yeah. I guarantee you, my arm. I've, I've seen just, I've seen the strict bicep curls that you you do. That you're 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 pretty much at body weight almost, aren't you? Weren't you at one point? Yeah. Yeah, from what I'm told, I, I've I've beaten records just yeah. on my lunch break when I used to <laughs> you know run a nutrition store. So one of these days I'll. I'll go down and try to do one officially. You know? Yeah, we'll yeah. See. <laughs> there you go. Because yeah, no, no doubt that that strength helps the, your top roll game as well. Anyway, that that back pressure that Absolutely. you can lo- load up, it, it it frees up all that side pressure hit that and takes it away from your opponent big time. So, I think that <clears throat> right and yeah. Sorry, go on. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say you're right, and you know lately, if I have been losing to top rollers, you know if I find a guy who's got a better top roll than I do, like an Alan Fisher. Hmm that's fine. I'll go to the strap. Now I'm not afraid to initiate that and I can push through it, which yeah. that's kind of dangerous. But you know, if I do lose my hand, I'm not out of the match. Cause I know I can hang there, yeah. you know, for a significant amount of time until I can push through it, which yeah. hopefully I don't have to go there, well, yeah. but I can, if I yeah, need well, to. Yeah. I was actually going to ask about that because I've seen some footage and uh, just doing some, some video research. Um, I've seen plenty of footage of you actually pulling with your, your wrist slightly back, but, um, still with your peck and shoulder well and truly in position, and and you look you look solid there. You look, you look like you you can pull there for quite a long time. Yeah, if I get in the right spot, I mean, I you know, I, it was funny when I got into arm wrestling. I was a gym net, gym nut, gym rat. I would do all the lifts, you know, bench press and all that, and I was mm. I was pretty good at at everything. But I stopped bench pressing when I got into arm wrestling because I didn't think I needed it, yeah. and it it hurt elbows so <laughs> the last couple of years i got back into to, to bench pressing and my side pressure has gone through the roof yeah. so it's something to be said about you know strict gym training and how it can help with arm wrestling once you become a good arm wrestler yeah well i, I know that um yeah local to to where i live there australia's bench press record holder uh he lives about 40 minutes away from me and he, he doesn't he doesn't arm wrestle but he he occasionally pops his head up at our club to say hello and puts his elbow on a table and 
and yeah. just the, the 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 sheer side pressure potential that you can feel in this guy is just like oh i'm glad you don't know how to arm wrestle because yeah so i can i don't that's bet- crazy ability right yeah, yeah yeah and and i mean we we've um obviously uh, there's there's a few strongman bench presses. Uh, Eric Spotto, I, I've seen him on the table as well. Just mm-hmm. look monstrous and um, yeah. Yep. So <laughs> that's all good. But um, Jamie, Jamie, I'd love to to start to go into about your ambition about um, a few matches that are coming up. Uh, you've obviously you've got Jeff Hale, and you mentioned to me that you've had a loss against Jeff Hale about six years ago. Um, tell yes. us tell us about that match. I couldn't I couldn't find the footage of it. I'd, I'd love to dig it up, but. Um, Tell us about that match. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I finally got a chance to pull Jeff Hale in uh, at Nationals in 2012. We all met up in the 154-pound weight class, which that's kind of where I hovered for a while, up until several years ago. And then I even, for some stupid reason, decided to make a drop to 150 to pull at UAL, which yep, terrible. I mean, the injuries came in being light, and I'm six feet tall. I shouldn't be pulling that. Anyways, um... Yeah, so I got to pull Jeff Hale. Uh, he ended up pulling Corey in the final, and it was an amazing match. Corey Miller, Jeff Hale was just, just the best finals of the day, you know. And I think Corey came out on top there. Um, but when I pulled Jeff, I mean, I knew what was coming, and I tried to anticipate it. And he turned me in so fast. <laughs> I was arm wrestling his forearm, like my hand was completely unwrapped from his. Like he just, it was, it was over in half a second. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like shit i need to get better <laughs> oh yeah yeah it was amazing so i've been waiting six years to pull him nice nice i know that fe- that feeling of uh, coming up against a uh, an incredibly fast arm wrestler for me it happened at my first experience at, at waf world championships against the bulgarian and and i didn't even mm-hmm. turn i didn't turn a muscle on he 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 took away my rotation of my my arm so quickly that i just thought what on earth just happened uh, okay i better 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 get better in that department but and jeff jeff seems like someone who uses that speed so um without without giving mm-hmm. without giving away what you're going to be doing to stop that um you feel you're prepared now for jeff this this time around well yeah i mean ever since i i, I jumped ship from ual which i rode that to the very end in fact <laughs> the picture they posted for uh wal when they advertised our match it was the very first WAL I went to, which was a week after a UAL event. So I pulled a UAL event out here in California at 150 pounds. Yeah. And then I drove to Vegas three days later, four days later. I It was funny because it was a 165-pound weight class for this event. And it was a regional, I believe. Yeah. And uh, I stepped on the scale after in and out and I had a beer in my hand when I weighed in. <laughs> and I was 157, like soaking wet. I wouldn't have even been... I mean, it was, I looked sick. Yeah. So, you know, but I did okay. I took fourth. I lost to Luke and Allen. In fact, those are the guys that beat me significantly over the last few years with WAL. But yep. pulling WAL forced me to be a more uh, smart puller. Yeah. Because if you go in there easy, fair, you're going to get your butt kicked. You, you got to go yeah. in and take what you want. And, and Bart Wood actually, he told me that, during the setup after i lost this one match he said just just be aggressive that's my only advice and i figured okay from then on i was like all right i'm gonna go in and take what i want and then that's kind of how i've been pulling lately so i used to get beat like i said earlier to hook pullers now i don't fear hook pullers Mm. because i can attack their bottom fingers better and i'm not afraid to go into a hook so and and as you say that the wal experience is is very very different I, i haven't i haven't pulled in that environment yet but um, you can clearly see how it's it's not a WAF setup in the same sense of no movement before the go and 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 carving is is a lot more lenient and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, if if you find yourself being the polite polite guy, <coughs> excuse me, if you find yourself being the polite guy, you're in trouble, aren't you? Exactly. You, you got to go in and take what you want. I mean, there's there's extreme cases that we've seen on TV with that, but but you can do it without being too overly yeah. <laughs> obvious, I should say, yeah. and. With someone like Jeff, I'm going to have to... I have a game plan. I have A, B, C, and D, and they're all the same. Just harder, faster, stronger. Yeah. And then I have E, which is another game plan <laughs> if, if something doesn't work. But I, I, I've... I've Yeah, I've, I've, I've welcomed this match for a long time. I love, I love it. In my own mind. I just... And I know Jeff Hale can top roll, too. That's yeah. the thing. People forget. It's Jeff Hale. Like, I've looked at the... Uh, uh, people are thinking, you know, Sam's just going to run right through him, which... Okay, I get it. 
but people are forgetting it's Jeff Hale. Yeah. Jeff Hale lives in the super match format. Yes, he And does. he's got more tools than you think he does. He's a very smart arm wrestler. Yeah. So, and I hope Jeff Hale wins because I want him undefeated. But I think it's going <laughs> to be a great match watching him and Sam. Yeah, well, yeah, him, him and Sam is, is, is huge as well, isn't it? And, and yeah, you're, yeah. S- you're sitting there waiting in the, in, in the, the wins for it. But um, right. H- how do you feel you go in the super match format? I, I've, um, you've obviously, you've, you've pulled a lot of tournaments you mentioned UAL you were probably the one of the poster boys of the UAL um, as you've said you rode that train and um, how many super matches at the professional level have you have you had in the in the past I've had several uh, not really too many on the main stage I mean I I think I got ahead of myself when they had me pull Corey you know a few years back and he just ran through me I got big and strong um, but it didn't help on the table um being a smarter arm wrestler now, I can get to that strength level yeah. and be more dominant. So, I, you know, I I like my chances, but I know I'm the underdog, and I've talked to Jeff. Yeah. Jeff thinks he's the underdog. I'm like, no, 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 you're <laughs> Jeff Hale. No, he's, he's a friend of mine. Yeah. But I, I, I feel I have to win this 3-0 to, yeah. to win it. Because yeah. I don't think if he gets one or two, then it starts to stack up in his favor the more yeah. the longer we go. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's Jeff Hale, so yeah. And as you, um, said, as you said, his super match experience—that's been his specialty in the Arm Wars series. And um, yeah, he, yeah, he not only competes well there in a physical sense, but also in a psychological sense. He's someone who really puts it to his opponent. So, um, it, and, I, and I imagine that the WAL arena is going to even amplify that. He's going to be able to really ramp that psychological pressure up. So, do you? Yeah, have- he's the most entertaining arm wrestler on the planet. I mean, yeah. if if it's not like just his energy alone before and during the match when it's going his way, you can't rival that. So yeah. I, yeah. I'm not going to go in there with his energy. Yeah, you, you don't want to get on that same energy level with Jeff Hale. You just let him do his thing, and I'm just <laughs> going to close my hand, and just that's going to be it. You yeah, know, that's it. That's that, that's it. Often it backfires when people try to match match out someone else's high energy, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. It's like when Alan shakes the table. You don't go shake the table with him. You just let him shake it, sniff his uh, ammonia capsules, and then you just go take care of business. Yeah. Absolutely. Jamie, tell me, tell me about your um, your nutrition business. I know that um, I've seen you, you. You you owned and ran the supplement store, and now you've got um, the 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 expansion of the, the franchise. Um, how is how has that been mm-hmm. complementary with your arm wrestling journey? Well, I tell you, you know, I've I've spent the last 15 years in the health and fitness business, whether it was as a trainer, as a gym manager, or selling fitness equipment, or running a nutrition store. And finally, when um, my wife had our our first daughter, um, she was going to go back to work after. And I said, well, I think it's time for me to jump ship, not work for people anymore, and just start my own thing. Mm. So it's kind of funny how arm wrestling's tied into that. Um, if you're going to start your own business, which a lot of people have, if your network's good, you yeah. can do amazing things. Yeah. And through arm wrestling, I know people in every state, every city, you know, well, not every city, but you know, just about all the major ones. Yeah. So, decided to run with it. Um, launched my own company from the ground up. Now we have a few arm wrestlers that are owners in their own territories, and we're actually signing a couple more next week, and the week after. Yeah. So we're growing pretty quick here in the first year. That's and awesome. yeah, everything's made to my standards and we, you know, bottle it, label it. And I got opportunities for my friends to be owners of their own business. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a win-win and I get to spend more time with family. So yeah, congratulations, man. That, that really is awesome. And I'd love to, I'd love to ask you about the nutrition side of, of performance as well, given your experience in that, that field. Um, how important do you find nutrition for peak performance? Oh, it's in, it's very important. And you know what the funny thing is, is there's a lot of so-called experts out there, and I'm by no means, I'm not the authority on anything, but there hasn't been any real studies on our sport and nutrition yeah. or supplementation, right? Because our sport is so unorthodox yeah. and it's kind of taboo. So I always say, try something, see if it works for you, and then run with it. I mean, I've lately in the last several years, I've loaded up on branch chain aminos and, and creatines and proteins, mm-hmm. and my elbow pains aren't hurting as much from arm wrestling, which yeah. is, okay, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. If something's going to help with muscle tissue, then you have connective tissue. It could work its way down to the joints Yeah. at that level, right? Joints, tendons, ligaments. So 
I don't take pain pills anymore for pain. I just load up on aminos and things like that, and I've noticed that, you know, my body's recovering a lot better. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, there's good and bad feedback on, on supplements, and people yeah. have their own opinion, and but... I- and and you're 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 obviously um, you're not dehydrating or anything like that these days. You're 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 walking around at about what at about one seventy six pounds. Is that is that about about where you're at? Well, uh, I'm gonna tell you the truth here. I, I stepped on the scale about a week ago. I was one eighty six. Oh, very good. <laughs> it was about two days after we agreed to pull at one seventy. So oh. I'm gonna have to start <laughs> the decline. Ah, uh, goodness me. Yeah, yeah. Well, what a, what so a, I, I love that one seventy. Yeah. It's, it's it's not too low. That that's fine. I can make that you know very easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's good. But one eighty six, uh, Jamie Sheldon. I'd love to love to see who you can knock off at that weight. That'd be very interesting. But um, no doubt we'll 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 see more of that to come. <laughs> um, but it's like a one eighty five Luke Kent. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. Look look strong. Didn't it? <laughs> look very strong. Has there been a? Yeah. Pati- you, we've talked about a few rivals that you've had. Obviously, Luke Kent, Alan Fisher, Sam Harris. Um, has there been a, a, a particular um, thorn in your side that you just have struggled with and just really wish you could work out? As far as opponents, yeah. As far as opponents, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's take it back to when I started. Uh, my first year, I lost to Alan Corey. Um, I've managed to get wins on them this year or in the last year. Um, who else? Vosgin has been another thorn since 2006 when he came over here and started beating up on all the North American guys. Yeah. And I could never figure him out. And the guy lives an hour and a half away from me. So I used to see him at every tournament. And for the longest time, I think I've got 30 something losses to Vosgin because oh, wow. he lives so close. Yeah. I mean, even we, we flew to the Arnold Classic and he was my only two losses. So I flew <laughs> halfway across the country pull a guy that i could pull yeah an hour and a half away you know which is kind of funny but uh finally managed to get a win or two wins on him last year so Very i'm good. slowly cl- crossing those names off and jeff hale's on it yep um sam harris is another one who i got a win on him at the arnold before it was a year before he actually blew up yep. and he became the sam harris we know now so i've got some payback for him because he's beaten me a few times since then yep and uh, of course, Luke Kent, my my old buddy, I owe him about ten. Yeah. So <laughs> I've got a couple wins on Luke, you know, five, six, seven years ago, but those don't count. Yeah. You know, we'll we want Luke Kent at this this stage. Yeah. See absolutely. what we can do respectfully. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Jamie, um, after WAL four oh four this year, um, is there anything else major on the cards for the remainder of two thousand eighteen? Uh, well, I've got another daughter coming in September, Great. so I, Good. I told, thank you, I told the league I'm going to be a little busy with that. I mean, I, I'm not expecting another match. I'm grateful for the one they're giving me. Yep. Um, if something else happens before September, it's possible, you know, I'm open. I've had this conversation with a, with a few of the guys and, you know, the guys who are more in, in tune with what's happening. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know they have their finals in I think Georgia in August, no, September. Yep. Which is, you know, three weeks before my daughter's born, so I'm not <laughs> yeah. sure that's going to fly very well. Yeah. Getting yeah, yeah, but, you know, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm just excited to have this match with Jeff, and, you know, I'll always support the league and, you know, what they do next year, too. Wonderful. Jamie, would you ever consider uh, going and competing in something like, like the Zlotita or, or WAF Worlds or anything like that? Well, I have a running joke with... Uh, Harold Ryden and Jake Smith. You know, you know Jake Smith. Yeah, yeah. Of course you do. Yeah, Jake's like you know one of my brothers in the sport with Harold. They're like my, my go to guys. Um, there was a, I'm the youngest, and I'm turning forty in two and a half years. And we have this deal that when I'm forty, the three of us are going to go compete at nationals and go to worlds. Yeah. And the masters, yeah. all all three <laughs> of us old, just go pull the forty and above or whatever, and yeah, hopefully yeah. not get my ass. By like Ingen Terzi or something, yeah. but which might happen. <laughs> uh, be a good experience. I've, I've only done it done it once at WAF Worlds, and it was it was it was a thrill. Um, there was just just the, the sheer depth of pullers there. The amount of after pulling you can do is crazy. Um, oh yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely worth it. You know, it's it's the thing is though, it's I have to justify because I if I do something like that and I travel to another country, I'm going to take the wife. Yeah. We're going to make a vacation out of it. So I'm looking at like a five thousand dollar investment to go arm wrestle and then you know that's 
with all the stuff we have going on right now, yeah, we're gonna have to put that yeah. off, you know, <laughs> at least a few more years. But yeah. you know, definitely on my list. Awesome. Yeah, I think you'd do well over there anyway. I think you'd be certainly you'd be top ten for your weight category. I think at WAF Worlds, I reckon without a doubt, and and possibly if you got the right draw and, and perform well, getting close and on the podium, all that sort of stuff, even so. We'd love to see you over there, man. So, um, what are, what are the what are the long term goals in the sport? You're, you're someone who started in this sport very very hungry, and you've done incredibly well. Are, are you are you still driven to 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 be the man in North America at your weight? Well, I think I'm finally coming to a level that I I, I wish I would have been at years ago in the sport. You know, yeah. things are starting to like click for me. I'm getting bigger, stronger. Um, I'm being or I don't want to say I'm better than these guys. I'm getting wins on some of these top guys. <laughs> yeah. And I, I used to think that I was, you know, a couple tiers below some of these guys. And Alan kept telling me, he's like, no, you're right here with us. You just haven't done it yet. Yeah. He's like, you're right there. You just got to be more hungry. And, you know, when I finally beat him, it clicked. Like, yeah. wait a minute, I can compete with these guys if I actually try and put my mind to it. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I it's funny. I had this... I don't know if you saw one of my posts. It was like, I just realized I'm the second oldest guy in my weight class in the, in the elite series. You have Cobra, then me, <laughs> then you have a bunch of these younger guys that I'm like, what the hell happened? I was like young. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I'm not I didn't, anymore. I didn't you know? realize you were at the, the older end of the North American crew. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm still young by, by some standards. Yeah. I mean, I'm almost 40, but it's, it's kind of a joke, but it's like, damn, he's got these younger guys in their twenties <laughs> and in their early thirties that are kicking my ass. It's like, wow. Yeah. It's kind of making me a little bit more hungry in that sense. Yeah. So I do have those goals. You know, I, I do want to grip up with some of the legends again and before they hang it up. And I'm just going to ride it out, man. Yeah. You know, well, it's, it's a good sport it's for that, it's isn't it? Wrestling. It's a good sport. It's yeah. one of the, I've never seen a sport with, with quite the longevity of this, this sport. So I think that, um, I know right. that you, I can imagine you, I, I know I want to be um, a, an 80 year old grandfather one day, arm wrestling my 30 year old grandchildren and they still can't pin me. That's, that's my, that's my long term goal. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. And you'll definitely be doing that, you yeah. know, yeah. a lot of fun. Well, and I think it's cool that you know I get to finally uh, meet you in person next week, right? Yeah, yeah, Arizona next week. At the uh, I'll be competing in the NAL championship, so uh, looking forward to to grouping up with people like Paul Lynn. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll definitely be there. I'll uh, I'm not pulling the the tournament because I'm going to save yeah. everything for Jeff, but I'll, I'll be there working on my tan and drinking yeah. some beer and hanging out and supporting everybody. And <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, well, man, I, I really look forward to to seeing you there and meeting you in person. And and I uh, can't thank you enough for coming on the show today, man. Hey, the pleasure's all mine, man. I mean, keep doing what you're doing. You're you're really blowing up the sport, and I think that's awesome. I mean, you got some of some of our best guys to come out there and, and hang out with you and, and pull, and that was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I mean, Justin had a great time. I talked to Ron. He had a blast. So keep keep doing it, man. Awesome. That's awesome. No worries. Thank you very much, brother. Okay. Talk Take to you care. soon. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. There we have it. Jamie, the natural Sheldon. Uh, fascinating story and, and, and a really cool dude as well. So, um, He's obviously got the big match coming up with Jeff Hale at WAL 404. You heard it there. He is very hungry to to correct the, the loss that he had against Jeff Hale back, I think it was in 2012 uh, at the Nationals. So um, Jamie Sheldon there, um, really appreciate the fact that he was on the show. All right, guys. If you could hit like and share on this one, that would be amazing. All right, see ya.